Hello and welcome back and today I present to you quite an absurd looking integral. That's all I'm gonna do to describe it. This thing is just straight up absurd. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the cosine of 2x times the sine of x plus sine 2x all divided by sine x dx. Yeah, that is one hell of a structure. But the solution development is ridiculously awesome. I mean, it involves many of my favorite tools and is just beautiful. And the final result, the final result is almost too good to believe. And by the way, if you check for x to negative x, for the integrand that is, then you'll find out we're integrating an even function of x because, well, cosine of negative 2x is cosine 2x, whereas sine of negative x minus sine 2x, the sine function being an odd function, gives you negative sine x plus sine 2x, but in the denominator we would have sine negative x, so that means we just have the negative signs canceling out. So we're integrating an even function of x. So we could integrate from negative to positive pi by two as well. And to get the result for that integral, we just solve the target integral and multiply the result by two. But coming back to the target integral, how on earth do you expect to solve this thing? Well, I see trig functions and I see, exponen and I see exponentials. So that means we should definitely invoke Euler's beautiful formula. So we know that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. In other words, sine theta is the imaginary part of e to the i theta. But this implies that sine of x plus sine 2x equals the imaginary part of e to the i times the argument of the sine function, which is of course x plus sine 2x. Okay, cool. Now for the integral, what does that mean for our target integral? Well, this implies that i here is now the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the cosine 2x times e to the i x plus sine 2x that I will expand of course as e to the i x plus i times sine 2x and we can expand this further because we know how exponential function multiplication works. So we have e to the i times sine 2x. All of this is divided by sine x and we're integrating with respect to x of course. Now notice something very cool we have e to the cosine of 2x and terribly sorry about that and we also have e to the i times sine 2x so it looks like we should combine them so we have imaginary part integral 0 to pi by 2 e to the i x times e to the cosine 2x plus i times sine 2x divided by sine x dx and again note that for this term here, we know it's equal to e to the 2ix. So this implies the target integral is the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the ix times e to the e to the 2ix divided by sine x, terribly sorry about that, dx. That was certainly eventful. And what we have now for the integrand is a complex exponential times an exponential having an argument that itself is a complex exponential, which is complex to say the least. However, when we're faced with having an exponential to another exponential function, the series, exp the series expansion for the exponential function usually comes in handy because it helps us say, get rid of one of the exponentials. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So e to the z can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. So we have e to the e to the 2ix expanded as the sum over k of e to the e to the 2ikx divided by k factorial. And notice that now well, we now only have one exponential. Well, an exponential to something that's not an exponential to deal with. 
but we also have an infinite series, which is infinitely cool. So it looks like we're on the right track. That's how we do advanced calculus. We just look at how cool everything looks, and that means we're on the right track. So this implies that the target integral i is in fact the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of e to the i x divided by sine x, and we expanded the other exponential as the sum over k, of e to the 2 i k x divided by k factorial dx. Now both these functions are independent of the index variable k, so we take them inside the summation operator and we have integral 0 to pi by 2 sum over k from 0 to infinity e to the i x times e to the 2 i k x. Again, we can write this as a single exponential function with the argument i x plus 2 k x or we should factor out the x term as well. So we have e to the i x times one plus two k. Okay, cool. Divided by k factorial times sine x dx. Now, if we switch up the order of the operators, we have the imaginary part of the sum over k from zero to infinity of the integrals from zero to pi by two of e to the i x times one plus two k x 2k, no, it's just 2k, we factored out the x, divided by sine x, and take note of the fact that 1 over k factorial is independent of the, in, of the, uh, the variable of integration, that's x, so we take it outside that operator. And now we'll make use of the linearity of the integration imaginary part and summation operators to take the summation operator all the way here to the integrand, and we have the sum over k of 1 by k factorial times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of imaginary part e to the i x times 1 plus 2 k divided by sine x dx. And we know exactly what this thing is, right? The imaginary part is in fact the sine of 2 k plus 1 x. And this is extremely cool because now we have something that's the Dirichlet kernel. So wait a minute, let me just write this. Okay, cool. So this is the target integral i and the integral we're dealing with now can be evaluated, can be evaluated using the Dirichlet kernel. So take note of the fact that sine of 2k plus 1 times x divided by sine x can be expanded as 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to, no wait, the index variable should be n now, so we have the sum over k from, uh, the sum over n from 1 to k now. Okay, cool. I have not messed this up. And we have the cosine of 2nx, which is quite nice. Why is it so nice? Because the integration here is actually pretty easy to deal with. So we have i equal to the sum, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k from 0 to infinity of 1 by k factorial times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 1 plus the sum over n from 1 to k of cosine 2 nx dx. So carrying out the integration, we have the sum over k of 1 by k factorial times what exactly we have x plus the sum over n from 1 to k of sine of 2nx divided by 2n with the limits being 0 and pi by 2, which is quite convenient. The reason for the convenience is, notice that we have, oh, I can't write with black ink. Well, I can, but that makes visibility an issue. So we have the purple color, and what was I about to do? Yeah, I was about to explain why the limits are so convenient. We have sine of 2n as x approaches pi by 2. We get sine of n times pi, which is 0. And of course, the sine of 2n times 0 is sine of 0, which is, of course, 0. So every term here is a big fat 0. And this implies that i here equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 by k factorial 
and x gives you pi by 2 minus 0, which is pi by 2, independent of the index variable k. So we write this as pi by 2 times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 by k factorial. And again, we reference the series expansion for the exponential function. Recall that e to the z is just the sum over k from 0 to infinity, terribly sorry about that, of z to the k divided by k factorial. So letting z equal to 1 gives us e equal to the sum over k of 1 by k factorial, which is exactly what we need, which implies that the integral here equals pi e divided by 2, which itself is a gorgeous result. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. It's just so satisfying to see our two favorite transcendental numbers here. The other integration result we recall was the pi over e result for integral negative to positive infinity cosine x divided by 1 plus x squared. And recall that we're integrating an even function of x, so we conclude that the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of e to the cosine 2x times the sine of x the sine of x plus sine 2x, terribly sorry about that, again English is a lot harder than math, and divided by sine x dx, this thing equals twice the result of i, so that equals pi times e, again I cannot get enough of this, cue that meme, I've been looking, for, I've been looking at this for what, like three hours or something, yeah, something like that, you guys get the meme, and this was absolutely beautiful, exotic in so many ways. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a follow on Instagram and you can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.